Happy Midnight. One of my favorite topics, werewolves. This is one of my favorite paintings. Let's go in depth and take a close look at it. It should be fun. This is another one of my favorite paintings. I painted this probably about eight years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago. And there's so many things I like about this painting. It's a nice mixture of impressionism and reality, but mostly, predominantly, it's impressionism. And one thing I like about Impressionism is it could be almost anything you want it to be. If you want it to be good. It takes real discernment and discipline and you got to know what to leave in and what to take out. That's why I said almost anything that you want. If you want it to be good. I mean, you can paint anything you want in any way you want. That doesn't mean it's going to be good. But I tried always with this painting and then all my other paintings to take out what I thought was not helping the painting and leave in what I thought made it better. The face on the moon I thought was a nice touch. A sleeping face because I wanted to establish kind of a sleepy, campy, relaxing type tone to this painting, even though the subject matter is somewhat frightening and uh, exciting, exhilarating. You can see the, the emotion in the face of the werewolf, whoever the man was just changed just made the transformation into the wolf yeah I really wanted impressionism to tell the story here in this painting because you can exaggerate much more than you can in real life see the roots and how I gave them those curves and those twirls it gives each tree each tree that has that, a lot of character. I like the mountains in the background as well. It really adds to the painting. The castle's simple, but it's big. If people were there, they would be much smaller than even the doors of the castle, even the windows. At least that's the imagination in my mind. I, I didn't put people in there, but then each star has character except for the, the little ones. But the clouds next to the mountain peaks I think the mountains really add a lot to this painting. It gives you that kind of cold, nighttime nature look. Kind of that uh, primal, untamed, primitive look, which is perfect for a werewolf painting. Yeah, it's Impressionism, so. I went ahead and used lighter brown and then a bright blue for the water. Makes it more pretty that way and gives it more character, I think. Makes it stand out more and it adds to the beauty of the painting. I wanted the light to touch him almost like it was the moonlight itself touching him that made him change even though technically according to the lore and in movies he would change even if he was indoors 
but it depends on what you watch and what you read because some werewolves can change any time. There's fish in the water. I made the fish a lighter blue so they would stand out. I remember when I was a boy, I was at the video store and there was a werewolf movie and I can't remember the name of it, but I picked up the box and I looked at it and it looked like it was set in medieval times and the cover of it and then the box uh, the back of the box, both the front of the box and the back of the box looked really good. And that was kind of what inspired me to paint this along with many other werewolf movies that I've seen. I remember watching the original Werewolf with Lon Chaney Jr. I think my favorites, if I really think about it, I think my favorites are Probably American Werewolf in London, and then The Howling. And then Silver Bullet was good, too. Yeah, I tried to make the teeth big and scary and sharp. I really like putting trees in the background of a lot of my paintings. And uh, some of the branches could look like hands almost. I do that sometimes in my paintings. This particular painting was really fun to do because I can go ahead and be creative and stylistic, make the trees all kinds of shapes and sizes, and uh, I really thought it fit the werewolf. The scenery matches the character and the character matches the scenery. But it's interesting, uh, the werewolf myth started in Greek mythology, a lycanthrope. And I didn't know that a long time ago, but it started in Greek mythology. But this castle looks like a castle in uh, more of in kind of like uh, the British Isles or in Germany. But yeah, in ancient Greece, there's a werewolf painting somewhere, probably buried in the stack of paintings that I have, that has some Greek columns, pillars, because I thought about how the, the werewolf myth started in uh, ancient Greece. That reminds me too, when I was a boy, I played the Sega Genesis video game. It was called Altered Beast. They had werewolves in that too, and that was also also an inspiration on me. And just that game in general, I thought it was it was very inspiring. And then of all the werewolf movies that I've seen, Curse of the Werewolf with Oliver Reed was another good one. I like that one as well. Maybe there's a prince or a princess or maybe even the king sleeping, having deep dreams in the castle, not knowing that the werewolf is outside, could come in. Yeah, the werewolf could probably fit into a lot of different types of scenery especially with all the movies that have been made in different settings. There's some roots inside the water. And that looks like it could be in the mud or in the water, too. I also do that in my paintings where I'll paint vines or roots or parts of trees or grass that's in the water or maybe leaves that fell into the water also. I made his eyes shiny, indicating you can see the moonlight inside his eyes, reflecting the moonlight. This painting here also would be a good setting for the werewolf. 
since you have the Greek pillars, Greek or Roman type columns. He could be here and come out as well. That would also be a Greek or a great setting since the uh, mythology started in ancient Greece anyway. I really, I, you know, I like the whole painting. Something about those mountains, how narrow they are and how they look, I really like. I'm glad I put those in there. And then that face in the moon, I think it adds a nice touch of style to the painting. And then those trees. I think this really captures what I wanted. I, I made sure that I got pretty much what I wanted and this painting turned out the way I want it, wanted it to be. The bridge. I don't know if I, I don't think I talked about the bridge yet, but you've seen it. Then you know, who, who knows what's back here? Maybe the werewolf will make his way back here behind the castle and come up another way. Climb up and get inside one of the windows. The werewolves are very agile. <laughs> very, very agile. Very capable. And the claws on Mr. Werewolf here. Is he friend or foe? I guess it depends on who crosses his path, who irritates him, and depends on if he's a moody werewolf or not. No, I wouldn't want to meet him regardless. And he looks very dangerous, very capable of a lot of harm. I've painted a few werewolf paintings, not a whole lot, but I've painted probably a handful. I'd have to check again, look at the stack of paintings that I have. But yeah, there's a there's so much here. There's so much here, and this could be from the 12th, 13th century, 14th century, 15th, 16th. There's a lot of stories or movies that could be made based on this painting. Yeah, you can always have it where he was uh, he was bitten by a werewolf, just like all the other movies, but make it like a like a twist to it rather than just having the same formula over and over again. But I'll tell you, just to be honest, and I think there's probably a lot of people who don't admit this, but I like a lot of the old formulas because they work. And I'm kind of satisfied with with that uh, formula where someone gets bitten by a werewolf and then later they change into a werewolf and uh, there's maybe there's a romantic relationship that gets involved. You know, the same old thing, I understand that, but sometimes those formulas are so good and they're so satisfying that I actually, I like that. And I also like, I mentioned it before, the, the formula of good guy against villain, heroine against a monster, or a hero against a monster, or whatever it is, good versus evil. That's a formula that I really like, and uh, I'll explore that in the future with future paintings because I have created good guys squaring off against monsters or bad guys, and, and uh, that's a theme that works. You don't always have to end a story on the brightest note, but those movies and stories uh, to me are the most satisfying. I really like those. Uh, of course, werewolf movies often end in tragedy. <laughs> they often end with broken hearts. Whether it's the werewolf who dies and then changes back into his or her original form and then their companion sees him lying dead the relationship's over, and then they're crying, like in American Werewolf in London. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, a painting that I enjoyed painting. I enjoyed creating it. I was able to use warm and bright browns in here 
which if it was just a realistic painting, I wouldn't have been able to do that unless uh, the lighting was just right and I could make some changes. But yeah, this is a painting I'm happy with. I think it's among my top three werewolf paintings, maybe two, because I haven't painted that that many of them, but I've always liked the genre, always admired werewolf lore and movies, and really think it's uh, very, very interesting. Hope you enjoyed looking at this one. I know I did. Sorry if the screen is a little foggy. I'm on the moors, and it's foggy out here, so... Yeah, this is one I really like, and I hope you enjoyed looking at it with me. Consider subscribing, please, and uh, thank you for joining me for this nightcap, and I wish, I wish I could find all my werewolf paintings. I haven't looked very well. I'll probably go in and dig and look and see if I can find some more but the next video will probably be about a different topic but I'm going to still dig those werewolf paintings out and see what uh, I could find so thank you everybody happy midnight and uh, take care see you next time